Hello, George Romanich here. Welcome to Fundamentals of Weather and Climate playlist. In today's video, we are going to talk about the radiation of the Sun and the Earth. As you know from my previous video, all objects around us emit radiation. Some of that radiation is visible to us, some of it is not. I emit radiation in the form of infrared radiation and our eyes cannot detect it. Yet you can see me, so how is that possible? Well, that's possible because there is visible light that is coming through the window, bouncing off of me, and you can see me. There is also visible light produced by these light bulbs on the ceiling that is bouncing off and you can see me. So if I was in a completely dark room, you wouldn't see me. But if you had that infrared camera, I would be detectable because I emit infrared radiation. Now, the ultimate source of electromagnetic radiation is vibration of electrons in uh, atoms that are making up matter around us. And we know that that vibration of the matter and electrons is also proportional to temperature, which allows us to conclude if we increase temperature of an object, that means the electromagnetic energy emitted by that object also increases. Very, very important. Now, we also know from my previous video that energy emitted by radiation is given by Great Planck's law, where energy is a constant age times yet another constant speed of light, 300,000 kilometers per second, divided by lambda, wavelength. Now, because this is fundamentals playlist, let me just remind you what this wavelength is. If you have a wave, electromagnetic wave, then lambda is wavelength and that's the distance between two adjacent crests in the wave. So you can see if we combine these two expressions, you can conclude that when temperature is increasing, electromagnetic energy emitted by the object is increasing. But that energy is proportion, uh, inversely proportional to the wavelength, which means that the wavelength of emitted radiation is decreasing as temperature is increasing. Very, very important. And now let me tell you that you can see this relationship in front of your eyes every single time you turn on your oven. First, you do not see any radiation being emitted by the oven when it is turned on. It is still radiating but in infrared part of the spectrum and your eyes cannot see it. However, you turn on oven, uh, sorry, stove, I wanted to say stove. You turn on the stove, temperature starts increasing, energy of electromagnetic radiation is increasing, and at some point that energy ends up being in the visible part of the spectrum that our eyes can see, but visible part of the spectrum has wavelength that is shorter than the infrared energy. And that is this relationship evolving in front of your eyes. Of course, then the question also becomes, is it possible to find relationship between temperature and energy directly? And the answer is yes. And that law is known as the great, great Stefan Boltzmann's law that says energy emitted by an object is uh, equal some constant, known as Stefan Boltzmann constant, times temperature to power 4. This is now new law that we are introducing in our fundamentals playlist, and this law is really, really great. Because it demonstrates that small changes in temperature result in profound changes in the energy emitted by our object. Say that we have some temperature T1, whatever it is. That temperature will give energy E1. Now I double temperature. I double temperature of the object. You can see from this relationship that the energy will increase 16 times. I triple temperature of my object. You can see from here that the energy output will be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 energy E1. 
And I believe if you multiply this, you will get 81 E1. That's the consequence of this great Stefan Boltzmann's law. By the way, the value of this constant, if you want to know, is 5.67 times 10 to negative 8 watts per square meter per Kelvin to power 4, but you can find that online if you want. Now, it is very important to understand that it is not that all energy that an object is emitting is being emitted at a fixed value of a wavelength. Rather, energy is emitted across many, many different wavelengths. However, there is always a particular wavelength at which object emits most of its energy. And we can find that wavelength known as lambda max from the great Wien's law that is uh, equal a constant 2897, I believe, divided by temperature. This is known as Wien's law. So we can see that as temperature is increasing, this maximum wavelength is decreasing. Let us now apply this law to the sun and the earth. And let us do that here. We know that uh, temperature at the surface of the sun is approximately 6,000 kelvins. It's uh, 5,778 kelvins, okay? I believe it's that value, uh, but you can say 7, 6,000 kelvins. Now, you can see then that this lambda max for the sun is equal 577, uh, sorry, 2897 divided by 5778. If you do this division, you will get 0. Uh, 5013 0.5013 micrometers now by the way yes I should say if you want to use this equation then temperature should be in kelvins and the result you will get is in micrometers which means this constant has actual units micrometers times kelvin if you want to use Celsius, then this constant has different value. At any rate, this is for the sun. Sun is much hotter than the earth. Temperature of the earth, as you know from my previous videos, is on average 15 global temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, and that would be 288 kelvins. That means that lambda max for our planet earth is equal 2897 divided by 288, you will get 10.1 micrometers. What a beautiful conclusion. Conclusion, because the sun is much hotter than the earth, most of the energy from the sun is emitted at much shorter wavelength than the energy emitted by our beautiful planet Earth. And here is visualization of the wavelength if you are not familiar with that concept. However, I would now like to emphasize once more that this does not mean that all energy by these two objects is emitted at these wavelengths, just most of the energy. How the rest of the energy is distributed across wavelengths I will show you now in two to three beautiful figures. Let's go there. Here is a slide that shows electromagnetic spectrum of the sun. Spectrum means distribution of energies for different wavelengths. So consequently, Y axis is radiation intensity or energy in watts per square meter per micrometers. And the X axis is wavelength in micrometers but because there are so many different wavelengths, I had to cut x-axis here, and the rest here is in meters. As we just calculated a few minutes ago, most of the radiation from the sun 
comes at a wavelength of 0.5013 micrometers and you can see indeed that that's the peak in this curve. And this part of the spectrum is known as the visible light. So it is not surprising that our eyes evolved to see visible light. That's because 44% of the energy that the sun emits is in the form of visible light. If our eyes evolved to see microwaves, they would be useless because sun only emits less than 1% in microwave part of the spectrum. However, going back to the visible part of the spectrum, yet shorter wavelengths than the visible light, light are ultraviolet wavelengths, X-rays and gamma rays. Sun only emits about 7% of the total energy in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. However, that would be enough to destroy life on this planet, or we at least wouldn't have life in the form we have now. Fortunately, almost all of this ultraviolet radiation, as well as X-rays and gamma rays, are absorbed in the atmosphere. Ozone absorbs between 97 and 99 percent of ultraviolet radiation that comes from the sun. Then longer wavelengths than the visible light that our eyes cannot see are uh, infrared wavelengths. And first we have near infrared and then far infrared light. In the part of the spectrum between visible light and 1.5 micrometers, sun emits approximately 37% of radiation. So that's also a significant amount. And then beyond 1.5 micrometer, it emits only 11% of the total radiation. And then, as I said, because this range of wavelengths becomes very large, I had to cut x-axis. So in microwave, TV waves and uh, short radio waves that are already hundreds of meters long, sun emits below 1% of the total energy. This is gorgeous curve. This is footprint of our beautiful sun. You should print this and put somewhere on t-shirt or your wall because this is what gives life on our planet. Now, we also discussed the difference between solar radiation and the Earth's radiation and that difference is highlighted in this slide. This is basically a repetition of the previous slide but focused on the part of the spectrum where the sun emits most of its energy. So we can see that sun that is sitting at approximately 600 kelvins emits most of the radiation as we calculated at 0.5013 microns. And consequently, we call that short wave radiation. Earth is much colder than the sun, 288 kelvins. And consequently, as we calculated, maximum of the energy is emitted here at 10.1 microns. And so we call this energy of the Earth, including Earth's atmosphere, long wave radiation. So when you hear meteorologists and atmospheric scientists talking about short wave radiation and long wave radiation, they really mean sun's radiation for short wave radiation and Earth's radiation for long wave radiation. You can see that overall the shape of the curves is the same and that can be theoretically derived through Planck's law, but we are not going to go, I will go into that in my Thursday playlist on advanced videos. But while the shape of the curves is the same, the amount of energy, notice the amount of energy is profoundly different. Profoundly different, you know why? Because the sun is much hotter and Stefan Boltzmann or Stefan Boltzmann's law dictates that the amount of electromagnetic radiation is proportional to the temperature to the power 4 as we discussed previously. That's why I wanted to introduce these great laws so you understand these curves beyond simply memorizing them or something like that. So next time when you see our beautiful planet Earth, you can visualize electromagnetic radiation being emitted by our planet and the maximum is at the wavelength of 10.1 micrometers. And then if you see even more beautiful sun on one of these photographs, you can understand that the maximum uh, wave, uh, energy, most of the energy is emitted at the wavelength of visible light. And that's why 
we can see things around us. In next video, I will talk about the characteristics of the sun in more details. That's because this is the star responsible for the life and pretty much everything we see around us. So until next video, goodbye.